So I have had one of these before and I've tested it, but I thought, you know, this one's a pretty good price. And I mean, I do like the Lindhouse brand, despite their, uh, their poor airflow numbers. So this one is the uh, Diamante 300. The 300 indi indicates its width in a, let's see. It's gotta be in millimeters. Cause I mean the 300 is about 12 inches and then there's a 380, which is about 15 inches about. I'm pretty sure it's in millimeters. And then, of course, some of their machines are measured in centimeters. So you have a 30 and a 38. Um, but the uh, Diamante is a dual motor system. So we have the suction motor, which is a 4.3 inch rotofill motor. Um, it's a dual stage motor. And then, of course, we have the brush roll motor. And uh, it. It uh, uses, um... <laughs> I am totally not prepared for this today. Not that it really takes much preparation, but still. Um, handle release on, is broken on this. And then uh, we have a two row brush on the Diamante as to where like the Activo would use a single, single row brush. And of course we have the height adjustment, which the wheels are located like right about here so it kind of has a weird little lean to it and uh they don't make hepa like stock hepa bags for these but a nice little yeah that's annoying um a nice little hack for this is uh this is a uh, Kenmore ULNO bag and as you can see it fits well, not perfectly, but it's pretty dang close to the original style. Only the cardboard collar would come out much further on the original style bag. And of course, we have the uh, foam pre-motor filter down here. Ugh, so annoying. You know, I thought this thing stood up a little bit better on its own. It just doesn't take much to knock it over. And unfortunately, to fix that, I thought it was just the pedal, but once I actually opened it up, um, I have to replace the uh, lower motor housing right here, which is around 50 bucks. And I'm like, uh, meh, I don't know. And then we have the electrostatic after filter in here, which comes in every box of bags. But of course, you know, if you're using a non stock bag, then of course you're not receiving those. And uh, the switch on this thing is really strange. Really, really strange. <laughs> I was actually watching a uh, video of uh, a healthcare pro from another YouTuber, Bunky's Workshop, if you're familiar with him. And <laughs> when he was demoing his healthcare pro, he actually just had the brush roll motor running. <laughs> and uh, it was actually picking up the rice despite, you know, there being no airflow. And that's really what Linto specializes in is their brush rolls. That's, you know, where the power of the machine comes from. Cause I mean, it certainly doesn't come from its, you know, airflow and suction numbers, but, uh, the, the weird switch set up on here, this is active and you can shut off one of the motors with this. So like if we turn this on to the, uh, single setting, you see that both of the motors are active, but if we hit that, the brush roll motor is off. But if we switch it to the two setting, just that, just the brush roll motor is running. And I'm. Oops. I am still not, I'm still not exactly sure how that works. I mean, it was just kind of a, it's kind of a mess around that switch. Lots of, uh, lots of wires coming off of it, <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's using the same wires 
you know, there's only two wires that feed into that switch. So I, I don't know how it does that, you know. How can it deactivate, you know, the suction motor in one setting and deactivate the brush roll motor in the other setting? It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, I don't think I really have anything else to say about it at the moment. So why don't we just move on with our testing here. So first we'll start it off with the... Uh, Started off with just the uh, suction motor. Okay. Now we'll turn the brush roll motor on. I know I've mentioned this before, but one thing that kind of just irks me about their machines is the fact that they put an inch and a quarter stretch hose on these things. This is uh, actually the uh, original hose from... Actually, what this is, is this is from the Diamante, and the one I put on there is from my Healthcare Pro. This one had quite a bad odor to it, so... Uh... I took that off there and I happened to be digging through the box with my healthcare pro in it. And it's like, you know, I'm using a non stretch hose on the healthcare pro. So I just took that one off and I figured if this one's, if the odor doesn't come out of that, then, you know, whatever, I've already got a hose. But, uh, anyways, right here is a Mila hose. Now, you know, it might not be that noticeable from the, uh, you know, from the side, but if we take these and we look at them, I mean, it's clear that, uh, you know, the Lindhouse hose has a lot of space that's occupied by the folds. And I think that's kind of a, I think that's one of the reasons, you know, we see such low numbers from them. I think, you know, they do need to have they do need to have a uh, wider hose put on them because this this is just not cutting it and it's what makes it even worse is uh you know your tools are 35 millimeter so you know when you're going from a 35 millimeter connection right here down to this i mean you're creating a clog point you know right in this area where the hose connects to it So, I, I don't know. I think that's definitely something they should address, you know, putting a wider hose on this thing. I know they added a longer hose to the, uh, you know, the current versions of the Activa, but it didn't seem to me like it was wider. I could be mistaken, though. But, anyhow. Straighten that up a little bit. And let's take the measurement at the end of the hose. And so now we'll take the measurement at the end of the wand. Bit of curvature at the wand here, so we're just going to eliminate that. All right, so we got this taped up to the box. Um, so we're gonna take our nozzle measurements here.
So I'm going to do something a little bit unusual here. I'm actually going to run a single stroke with just the brush roll so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Their brush rolls are very well designed, and that's where the power comes from in the nose. So we should see it pick up either everything in the path or pretty close to it. And then we'll turn the vacuum motor on and pick the rest of it up. I keep forgetting that it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, you know, it did well even with just the brush roll motor. And, you know, I know that's not really that big of an accomplishment, but, uh, you know, there definitely are certain nozzles that couldn't do that. And, uh, you know, they're very good groomers. Very, very good groomers. And I was told by someone who sells Lindhouse that uh, you want your height adjustment to be just to the point where uh, it'll turn red if you leave it sitting, you know, idle. He said you just want it barely to that point where the red light can come on. That's what he's told me, and I mean, he has been selling them for as long as I can remember. But, you know, I mean, despite their numbers, they're actually... They've actually been CRI certified. They're not gold. I think they were, well, I want to say they were either silver or bronze rated machines. So, I mean, clearly they do the job and probably better than we expect them to, given what we see from them power wise. But, you know, if Lindhouse would just take some time, make some changes to them, you know, like, uh, fixing the narrow hose issue and probably you know making the air path a little bit better sealed especially down to like the nozzle because i mean we saw the uh what was it that nilfisk no it was an advanced the advanced spectrum 12p actually got a pretty good rating at the bottom of its uh nozzle despite also being you know a 4.3 inch motor and you know they You know they just did it a little better so it's like i feel like if they would you know kind of incorporate some of those designs possibly like having you know a flexible hose from where you know the wand joins to the machine down to the nozzle we might find a much better seal <clears throat> of course you know that might create some challenges for this machine because uh it actually has a little removable flap that's in the in the nozzle chamber meant for their dry cleaning system and that's uh that's why we can run this machine without the suction motor is they have this kind of host like uh, cleaning system very low moisture and then you know you put down this stuff that's like micro sponges or whatever and you use the brush only to work it into the carpet along with a little adapter that closes off the uh, brush roll chamber and then you know wait a while after agitating you suck it up it's kind of interesting, but I don't think it's that useful. I'd rather, you know, shampoo with, you know, water extraction machines. But, you know, it's it's a nice vacuum. I do like it. It's just got its flaws, just like any machine. <laughs> 